it's great to have you all on today, and uh, we're going to talk about a subject that a lot of people don't go after very often. They're too busy going after new leads, searching out there, and just talking to their existing customers. So before we get going, just talk about a couple of things. For those of you on the call for the first time, our, our operation here is Knock Up Business Growth Advisors, Strategies and Tactics to Grow Your Bigger Slice of Business. And uh, we do help everyone that we can with their marketing, working through strategies, not just the tactic of an email or sending out a postcard or using just um, Facebook or something like that. We take a look at the whole strategy, and we help you with setting it all up, and we can even help you with automating it. And you'll see here from our menu of the knockoutbusinessgrowth.com, we have different packages, webinars, and a blog, and we even have a business advisory group like a mastermind. The other part of our business is Business Technologies New England, where we help you automate it using products like Act, Infusionsoft, Zoho. Uh, so if you are struggling to get it all done, please let us know. I do want to let you know about a workshop coming up, and I am working with the United Regional Chamber of Commerce out of Plainville, Mass., and it's called The Biggest Slice of Business 10X, a 90-day planning workshop on Thursday, May 16th from 8 to 12. <clears throat> you do not have to be a member of the chamber to attend this. Southern New England's number one planning event for small businesses who want to grow five to ten times faster work less doing it. That's the key, work less doing it. So uh, what are we going to do here? We're going to go about talking on uh, these areas, developing your game plan. What is your unique value or uh, selling opposite, you know, selling statement, user USP. Target market, the psychology of the prospect, the right message, and how to, once you get them, create uh, increasing of your conversions and creating authority or filling the funnel and process automation. This is something that I put on every so often, and the local chamber here wanted to do something for their businesses and their members. You also, as part of this, it's a half-day workshop. It's going to be hands-on, so bring a pen and pencil and some paper, and we'll give you some materials to work with. But as a follow-up, we want you to be successful. So we're going to have a Facebook group for you to access where you can um, – Go in and ask questions and, uh, you know, get answers. And we're also going to have a couple of follow-up online group coaching calls. I'll bring up a new topic that you could use as you're working through your first 90 days and also take some live questions and answers, do some Q&A with you. The... Um, some of the areas, again, are attracting who, your ideal who um, because your message has got to be designed for them. Successful business examples, we'll go over some of those. We'll talk about some simple proven strategies. And, of course, one of the big ones, number four, maybe I should have put that on number one, but increase your leads. That's what you need. Um, plus, uh, what to do about your website to increase the leads and attract more qualified who. This will be this workshop will be on May 16th again, and I normally charge $147 for it. You'll if you sign up before May 9th, um, it'll only be $97. And for those of you from the chamber that are on the call today, talk to the chamber. There'll be a special discount code for you as well because being a chamber member is obviously uh, an advantage for you since the chamber is sponsoring this. Okay, we're going to talk about reactivating lost customers. Why customers don't return. So 
as we're going through this, I think you're going to find out that there's an interesting information here about why they don't return. Are they dissatisfied with your product or services? Maybe. They no longer require your product or services. Some might not require it. No longer can they to do business with you, moved away, etc. Could possibly be. But if you're doing a lot of online, there's no reason for that to be part of the reason why they don't return. They switch to another competitor of your product or service. That could possibly happen, um, but it may not be because of just price. They're embarrassed, feel like they've disappointed you. Maybe, but I thought that one was a good one. So, but what is the number one reason? Can anybody tell me, on, put it up on the Q&A before I bring it up here? Let's see. There is a number one reason. Chago, you hit it. Um, I see customer service from Karen. I'm holding Chago's answer. Um, let's see, we don't follow up with customers. That's, that's a good one. Yep, from Karen. Yep. Savannah. Oh, yeah, you know the answer because we talked about it last week. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, let's, let's put it up here. They forget. Yes, believe it or not, they forget about you. Okay. Did you forget to market to them after they bought from you? Okay. Um, you know, it, it's interesting that they'll forget you especially if they can find your product on some other competitive site. Well, I'll buy it over here and I'll, um, you know, just buy my stuff here then, you know, and, and, and I found it and then I forget that you offer this other special thing that I've gone off and looked around for again. So this is a good one from Phil. You don't show that you care about them. Very true. First, every business has a specific time when someone becomes a lost customer. <clears throat> lost customers need to be placed in a separate lost customer campaign. So you need to go through your list and you need to take a look at these customers. If they haven't bought from you, and depending on if it's a consumer product where they're going to need to buy one every 30, 60, 90 days, if they haven't bought something in that time frame, they need to be in the lost customer. Okay? Um, and you need to have a campaign to follow through on that will give you that information. Um, basically, you need to know, whoops, you need to know why they're lost, why, what happened. And uh, being, knowing that, then the lost customer, you need a lost customer reactivation campaign. It needs to let the customer know that you know they've been missing. You've got to let them know that. And that's where it all starts to play, okay? So what to do to get the customers back? First of all, the lost customer reactivation campaign needs to be sequential. It's just not a one-off email, postcard, letter, or a phone call. Hey, I haven't heard from you for a while. When you got a minute, give me a call. Go up on our website, and that's it. Don't give up on them if they fail to respond the first time. It's very important. Uh, you place them in a lost customer reactivation campaign because maybe they don't need your product right this minute. Um, maybe something happened personally to them or something happened at their business, and they're not buying that product right this minute but you don't want to open up the door for them to start looking around, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you examples of what I'm talking about and why you need to be in contact with them. The one I have for uh, displaying here is some postcards. Now, I realize everybody gets excited about direct mail costing them money, but when you look at these, 
I want you to start thinking about not only could you send out a postcard, but take some of this information and the display of what they're doing and say, hey, wait a minute, I can send these in an email or I can use them in a letter or put it up on my Facebook page to my people that I haven't talked to in a while, um, whatever. So the first one, this is a company that was that's called Gage. It's a men's clothing out, you know, place, menswear. And if anyone has ever heard of some of the marketers, more uh, famous marketers in around here, Bill Glazier owned this business back in years ago in Baltimore. And this is what he would do. So you you would go to the men's store, maybe buy a suit, maybe in January. And it was uh, maybe a winter suit. Now spring is coming. You haven't seen him come in and out of the store. If he hasn't bought anything, send him a postcard. Now you notice here he's not showing beautiful suits. and I mean, I shouldn't say beautiful because men go with handsome, but basically... Maybe the women would consider him beautiful, but basically he's not doing that. What's he got here? He's got a carrot dangling on the left. We really do miss you. Our records indicate it's been too long since you visited Gage Menswear. So we're giving you a free $10 Gage gift certificate. It even doubles to $20 when you purchase when you purchase of $100 or more and triples to 60 with your purchase of 200 or more. And he comes up with three reasons why. Okay, triple your money back, world-class service, new spring 2004 arrivals. Okay, and he's got a offer expires date. And then on the other side of the postcard, because you can use both sides, he's got the coupon that you would bring in. This is how they measured how successful that was. But think about this for a minute. If you were doing it by email, put in a discount code that they could use, okay? So now you'll know if they use that discount code, they that that's where they came from. They were lost customers. They acted on the discount code, and they did it by a certain date. Again, we'd still use a date. So he doesn't hear from you the first time. I like this. He's got a compass. Um, shall we send out a search party? A few weeks ago, we mailed you a free $10 gauge gift certificate. So you notice he didn't send it day two. He waited a little bit, and he sent it out, okay? Um, and he's got another offer. He's got the offer, and he's extended it to the 9th, okay, of May. Again, it's the same message, except that he's attracting you with a different disruption, okay? Um, again, we're not looking at a whole bunch of suits from Joseph Abood and so on and so forth. It's a compass, okay? Then he sends out another one, last chance. And you notice he's got a pad of paper on the side. We quit. Twice before we mailed you a free $10 gauge gift certificate because our records indicate it's been too long since you've been in the store. Well, just in case you misplaced it, here's another one on the flip side of this card. We really do want to see you, but honestly, this is your last chance. It even doubles to $20 with your purchase of 100 So the offer is still the same, but what is he doing here? He is trying to attract you, and it's not your typical type of postcard. That's what you should do with your emails. That's what you should do on your social media. Make them different. Make them stand out. Okay? And, of course, on the other side, he's got the last chance, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So that's, again, I know people, and, and I bring this up because I hear it all the time, direct mail is a problem. Direct mail is too much money. Well, just uh, within the last couple of weeks, um, I got an offer from Staples for a thousand a thousand contacts. They will send out your postcard, and they told me with uh, 
the cost of the postcard for mailing for five hundred sixty dollars. That's a thousand postcards. That's fifty six cents a piece. Take a look at how much your customers are worth. Would you spend fifty six dollars? I mean, excuse me, fifty six cents on each customer for a total of five hundred sixty dollars. And remember. We've, that's, he's, I've shown you there three different postcards. So when they walk in with a postcard, you'll know which one works better than the other, too. Or in this case, if you use your email and you have that offer code, one, and then the next one goes out with a different offer code, two, and then an offer code, three, you're going to find out which email works the best. Here's another one. This is a lunch bag. Um, again, just some ideas that you could think about. So it's from Brookgate Tire and Auto Center. And it says, who says there's no free lunch? Look inside. So what he's done is he's come up with a, a letter, and he has formed a joint venture with a restaurant. We need your help, and we're willing to buy you lunch to get it. We have partnered up with Del Sangro's Rest Restaurante to give you a free lunch. But wait, there's more, just like on the infomercials. How about a free oil change on top of that? Keep reading to find out about that. Good only until January 15th. You may be wondering why we're doing this since you always heard there's no free lunch. Here's the deal. It's a bribe, and we miss you. Now, this is unique. It's different. It stands out. Okay? Um, basically, they're saying we miss you, and they've got different highlights in here. We we want to take this time to apologize, obviously, for not getting back to them. Free lunch up here on the top of the second page. We're asking for a second chance, and we're not ashamed to give you a bribe to get it. Okay? Just schedule your free oil change, and we'll include... Uh, lunch buffet, including dessert at Del Sangro's Restaurante on Snow Road. We will pay them for the lunch. You notice that in this letter, he's highlighted, underlined things that, in other words, instead of you reading the whole thing word for word, you can quickly go through this and see what's going on and what what is the offer. And we've got here in bold uh, and with a yellow highlighting in the background, this offer expires, so basically he's trying to encourage you right now to get there. We expect a lot of people in his PS to take us up on this, so make sure you call. Okay. Um, so there's different, you know, different ways of doing this, and you could take some of this if you really want to just stick with emails, and you could put that into an email. Okay. Maybe you have an offer from someone else in your industry, if you work with them as a joint venture to say you're a lost customer, you can get a significant discount on something everybody wants and you're in, in, in this industry by going to ABC Company's link here and using this code or something like that. In the meantime, ABC Company is doing the same on their end and bringing in lost customers to you, which what's happening on both ends is you're now getting new customers as well. Here's another idea. This is a little cutie one. We've been searching for you, so here's a girl with a magnifying glass. Don't delay. Don't miss out on this free offer. Okay. Again, he's offering something and includes a lunch and so forth. But then he turned it into an email. And he, what's going on here? We've got a consistent message, and he took the postcard, and now he's sent it out as an email with the same picture on it. So if I've got the postcard, now this morning I get this email. Oh, yeah, I remember this. You know, I should go over there and get an oil change, and I need to have my brakes checked and so on and so forth. It doesn't hurt to communicate that way. You could even put it in your monthly email newsletter if you want to. Um, but basically, you are communicating to them on a regular basis. And it does not have to be every other day. You could send it to them week one, wait two weeks, wait three weeks, send it again. And 
to believe it or not, it wouldn't even hurt to repeat some of the stuff. You know, you send it over because, like, again, as I said, they may, there may be a delay in why they need to buy your product again that you don't know about. But if you're consistently in front of them, they're going to know that you're around and that you appreciate their business. So basically, you know, getting yourself out there and communicating on a regular basis is going to provide you with a higher return on investing in your lost customers. So, oops, we missed one there. Basically, your lost customers become found. Okay? So, that's kind of that's basically my topic for today about lost customers. And what I would like to do is open this up to some Q&A. And if you have a question, I'd like you to post it up there and we'll take a look at it. Oh, I got a comment about my uh, about the suits. Phil says, I'd say or think beauty, laugh out loud. Okay. Craig asks here, um, is it, how often, again, do you feel if you do a drip email campaign or combine things with a mailing, should you do it? Well, first of all, if you're going to do a mailing, but you have their email address as well, I would give a postcard, especially something like uh, a good week before I would send out an email. And I might wait a little longer, of course, and then send out an email. And it is important to do it as a drip campaign because you're constantly in front of them. Karen, let's see, do you have any suggestions for subject lines to get people to open your emails? Um, I think it all depends on your business and attracting them, okay? You want something that's going to disrupt them and get them to take a look at that email, all right? And by the way, one of the things about email marketing is that you take a look at your open rate, and I don't know, let's say we sent out a 1,000 emails, and only... You know, 10% of them opened it up, which is pretty good. That's really higher than 10% because there's people are opening them up on their phones, their tablets, and so forth. And there's in each one of these emails is a hidden pixel. And if it's not coming back to you because of the what they're using, then you've got a you're going to look at it and say, well, it could be 12 or 15%. Okay, but for the subjects, I would definitely put things in like we miss you, um, we love your business, um, we're so sorry we haven't talked to you in a while or something. Um, and um, I do have something that can help you with headlines. So uh, what I will do is I will post this video up on YouTube, and then I'll add an attachment as well for you to take a look at. Uh, let's see what we have here. Offer the headlines cheat sheet. That's what I'm going to do. So, um, and that came from Ben. So he knows I know about that because uh, he's got one. So I'm going to do that for you, and I'll send that out. So when you, you'll get an email regarding the uh, video and a link, and I'll attach the headlines for you. Any other questions, anyone? Hazel asked me, is it... Is a sending a... I know you showed a bunch of postcards, and sending a postcard... As you did mention, it can be a little expensive, but is it really necessary? I think what you need to do is take a look at uh, what is your return on your customers and what is the average customer worth to you. And I think you're going to find that for, as my example with Staples, for $0.56, cents, 
it's worth it, okay? Um, and I would, if you're going to send it out, you don't have to send it out every other week. You could send out once a month um, and or twice a quarter, and you could do something like that as long as you stay in communication with them. But when you send those out, you should um, turn around and combine it with other ways, whether it's Facebook page links or any other kind of social media and emails. But definitely take a look at the lifetime value and determine uh, what is it worth to you. And I think you'll find that it's going to be well worth it to do that. Besides, nowadays we all get bombed with emails. And oh, I'll look at that later. I'll look at this later. And then we forget about it. And the next thing you know, it's going into the trash bin because it was so long ago. So, okay. Have we got anything else here? Good question. I sell a lot of products. How? Do, what's the best way to go about taking my lost customers who have only bought certain types of products and not others? Should I promote to them about my other products? I think the first thing I would do is segment your, your contacts, uh, your lost contacts especially, by the products that they buy. The first thing I would do is send out emails or postcards or however you want to communicate with using uh, just the products that they have bought in the past. Because if you try to promote other things that they haven't bought, they may not be interested. But remind them that they bought this uh, green widget from, from you and that you always have them in stock and they're ready to go and we find people buy them um, every few months, so don't forget to buy another green widget. Now, when they buy, you could then turn around and say, you know, I want to let you know, or doing, during the buying process, which is really upselling, let them know about your red and blue widgets or whatever else that you sell and provide services for. You can also, and here's another idea about lost customers, add value to the product we really want you back. If you buy this product, we'll throw in dot, 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 whatever it is, and that will encourage them. But remember, we're focusing on the products that they buy from you, not just trying to throw them other things. I mean, if I think about it, um, you know, I go to uh, one of the popular stores over in my mall, and I have a credit card with them, and I'm buying men's you know, clothing. But what do I get for emails? Women's clothing. Um, children's clothing. I have no interest in that. And every once in a while I get something about men. Well, maybe what they should do is focus on what they have for men's suits, men's new shirts that have come out for the spring. And um, then every once in a while... Does anybody in your family need these other types of clothing or something? Okay. So, got a good point here from Wendy. It's less costly to keep a client than it is to get a new one. And that's true. You know, think about it. You have to spend money to get a client. You have to spend, a, and even if you're not spending a lot of money, it's still spending a lot of time coming up with ways to grab their attention and find and have them find you, whether it's through Google Ads, again, ads on Facebook, etc. These are all things that, um, you know, it does cost. And they're going to want to take a look at you, decide whether they should trust you or not. Um, so basically, uh, if you're doing business with lost customers, they're a warm customer because they already know you. They've already had success in buying from you. So basically, you know, it's better to sell to your existing customers and your lost customers. And, of course, the third one in that list is anyone who's been referred. They're a warm customer, potential lead, I should say. So, Okay. Any other questions?
Well, it looks like we're we're good for now. I want to thank you all for attending, and um, take a look at our website and watch for some emails about uh, our workshop coming up for those of you in the local Massachusetts, Rhode Island area. I hope you'll attend. I think you'll find you'll get a lot out of it. Um, you know, planning for the next 90 days, how to market to your people. We'll talk about marketing to lost customers. We'll talk about um, setting up that plan and getting it set up so that you can look at it once, do it, and repeat it. So, all right. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. And uh, watch for an email from me uh, announcing the uh, where you can go to get this video and watch it. And I also send you a sheet on headlines and take a look at those and just say, how can I use them? Maybe I can tweak them to work with my business. Once again, thank you, everyone, for attending, and have a great day, and we'll talk soon.